Hello, 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 and welcome to this um, talk to talk about the importance of learning from errors. My name is uh, Roger Castells. I'm from Barcelona. I have uh, 20 years of experience in IT. I started my career as a sysadmin, admin, uh, later known as DevOps in these companies. And later I switched to a product management role in, and I worked in these two companies, uh, King, where I am currently, and also I worked at Globo, which is a quick um, commerce um, company. So what we're gonna talk about today is about something like that, right? About stocks. So this, I hope that you all, all know these memes that it talks about, the, the idea is to talk uh, today about this um, feeling that we all have, and it's a kind of normal to, um, say that everything is going well, right? So in this report, this is like a, a whatever report, it could be a yearly report, it could be a quarterly report, it could be your own objectives. The, the idea is that we have this tendency to say that everything is working fine. And the, the reason is because no one wants to share something like that, right? If you say that everything is going um, wrong, that the impact is not good, there are going to be more problems because people in general don't like to talk that much about problems. And uh, if you present something like that, you need like to really give explanations about what, what's going on. And, and maybe the reality is something like that, right? You've done some progress, there was not expected impact, but it's important that you explain the learning about um, the issues, right? So this is uh, the agenda that we have. It's, uh, we're going to talk a bit about errors in general and what they are. Um, and yeah, a little bit of context on, on why it's important to detect the errors and all of that. Later, we're gonna, I'm gonna share some techniques about how to detect um, errors. And I'm gonna share some learnings that I had and uh, that I consider them as, um, uh, as an example about that it's okay to talk about um, these errors. So first of all, what's an error? Um, I looked at in Wikipedia, of course, and the error is an action which is inaccurate or incorrect, right? And here I put like a, a, re a, a really fun cartoon that, when metrics go up, it's like, yeah, everything is like, congratulations, everything, everybody's doing great and uh, everything is good. But when metrics go down, it's like, oh yeah, this was a result of many external factors. And the thing is like, it's, it, well, it's hard sometimes even to know why some metrics are going up, um, but it's even maybe sometimes it's harder to know why why some metrics are going down, right? And uh, doing this analysis is something that we, we should all always try to do. So where can you find errors? The reality is that errors are everywhere. Everybody, everybody has done errors. Everybody does errors. So it's pretty, pretty normal. Some examples, I mean, there are hundreds of products and maybe released every month or every week, every year. There are a lot of products that are released and they don't get um, the expected impact, right? Or the expected um, share of the market. And the same goes with features. Um, and you are all the time trying to add features that could have an impact in metrics, but the reality is that the expected impact, it's not what it is. So, and... It happens because there was an error somehow, right? Uh, maybe a wrong assumption or something like that. So, and why it is so hard actually to recognize um, errors? First, fear and ego. Fear to maybe not get promoted, maybe to get fired. Um, you also have the ego that you feel that you are like the, uh, I don't know, if you're a senior product manager, recognizing errors is hard. Imagine if you're a director. So it's really difficult. To, to to embrace and, and and to talk about errors and also because the companies it is hard for a company right to encourage this this um uh, culture of sharing what are the errors that that we all have and and and, and it's quite normal and also because you are um being more vulnerable again with the others if you share that imagine that you're in a meeting with other product managers 10 product managers and you share your your errors this is not really common and and, and we should all encourage to talk about errors and and and, and know that this is a phase that you all we all need to to have in order to to learn so what causes an, an error there are a lot of things that could cause a, an error uh, wrong assumptions the you thought that the users wanted to have something but the reality is that this was not what they actually needed. Wrong expectations, you expected that um, one feature would have like a 10% increase in whatever metric, but it didn't happen. Lack of alignment, if you need to, to align between different teams and you do something that the other team is doing. So that's also a, an error, right? The ground processes and lack of knowledge, of course, if you don't know how to use certain technique to prioritize, it, it, it also can have an impact in and, 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 and cause an error. 
miscommunication is another classic, um, not understanding a user, not understanding uh, what the, the UX is proposing. So there are a lot of things that could um, cause um, an error. And why it is so important to minimize errors for a product manager. So the way I see it, um, or the way I see the, the role as a product manager is that it is really, really important that we try to minimize the number of errors that we do. And we need to work on that. You know, we, we talk with the users, we talk with the business, we talk with UX, we talk with the engineering team, and we need to, to be able to detect, okay, where there is a possible error in the process or who is like maybe not um, doing the right thing and all of that. And the impact is that um, if, if you're a product manager that of a, a, a team of six engineers or with seven, if we count the UX and all that, the, the, the product manager is like telling the team what to do so to some degree, you are like um, convincing them to go into one direction, right? And uh, well, these numbers are totally random, right? But you have six engineers. Imagine that the salaries and the cost for the company of these six engineers is like um, $300,000. And imagine that you have a feature that you need one, one month to release. This is the cost of this feature. And the same goes for one year. So if, if, if you have your own company, of course, this is much, much clearer for you, the impact that it has to, to release um, wrong features. But also, it's really important to take that into consideration when, when uh, at least I take that really, really serious when I'm a product manager to try to minimize the impact that it could have um, releasing something that it's, that it's wrong, right? So, uh, because at the end, well, this is like a, a little joke, right? But at, at the end, what you're doing actually is burning money, right? If you do things that um, don't get value, you're doing that and to some degree it is fine if you do errors eh? i mean it's not a problem but you need to try to learn from these errors and then minimize these errors in the future so you will become a better product manager and also the company will have better um results so it's important to take into consideration that when 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 looking for for errors so this is like a, a super basic flow on um what you do when you're like um, doing software development, right? Uh, here we're assuming that there isn't there are no errors in the strategy and the objectives of the company or or of the team. And in this timeline, we see that we start with the opportunity, with the problem, trying to understand the, the user needs and the pain points that will help you achieve your objectives. And then you start talking about okay, possible solutions that could um, help you. Later, you try, if you can, you can always try to validate this with users if you have the opportunity and then you start the development the release and then you finally validate the the the, the solution in here you have a a lot of loops in the sense that maybe you have a, a, an opportunity you validate it and it's wrong then you maybe go back to the solutions and you validate the opportunity if possible so this is actually an iteration that it, it's a loop that it happens um quite often and and, and the, the important thing for you for, for me is that the sooner you detect the possible error, the better. So I think I, I th that's my personal opinion. I think that we need to pay a lot of attention to the problem and the solutions and the validation before I start coding. So the cost, as I was mentioning before, of telling a team to do something that it's not the best thing to do, let's say, it has a huge cost. So I, I think that most of the errors should be detected. The sooner, the better so that the impact is um, less important for, for the company and, and, and for the team. So what is then a learning on, on when you are learning, of course, you can learn from two different phases, let's say, right? Uh, before a decision is made and after a decision is made. So what I'm, the learnings that happen before a decision, when you are a, as a product manager, you need to take a decision these learnings that happened before is what you learn from um, a workshop, what you learn from books, what you learn from yeah from learning from others like uh, like here we're 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 all doing. So this is like the the learnings that you happens bef um, before you take a decision. But the learnings that are also super important and that will uh, make you grow as a product manager are the learnings that happen after you take a decision. So you took a decision for whatever reason you had your rationale. And then you need to evaluate, okay, this decision that I, I, I took, what is the impact that it had? Um, it, should I maybe uh, took a, another different decision? So this is the learning that you will have. And, and, and this, as, as you can see here on the, on the arrow below, is what later you will use when you take, you need to take that, a, a decision in the future. So this is a, where you're learning and you will, it will be used for you later when you need to take a, another decision. So 
And another important thing, uh, as I was saying, mentioning here before about the learnings that you have before taking a decision that you could learn from maybe from a book, is that there is a difference between theory and practice, right? <clears throat> theory is, is important and, and, and is key, <clears throat> of course, to learning, but then practice and learning from 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 what the decisions you made in the in, in the past, it's really, really important. Um I think uh, this is a, my personal opinion is like reading books is great, but it's not the only way you should learn. So you should really, really, really practice and be exposed as much challenges as possible. So um, my personal opinion is like the, it is better if you are in um, different product teams and working with different people and not get used to be always in the same team because the amount of experience that you will have is better, right? So. If you are in a, in a company, it's better if you can try to switch in and be in different um, teams, because then with that, you will be exposed to new challenges and you will be exposed to new decisions and you will become actually a better um, product um, manager. So more practice and try to learn from the decisions that you made in the in, in the past. So now let's go to how to detect errors. I'm going to explain some basic techniques or and, and things and to, that will help you to, to detect errors after you took a, a decision. So this is the list of things, um, experiments. Um, you can ask questions to metrics, or, um, to the users, or to yourself to learn about um, errors. You can have also formal meetings and formal documents, review your processes and your ways of working, and also ask for feedback. This is, of course, there are more things uh, that you could do, but uh, let's go with them. That these ones are like the, the classic, right? So the first thing, experiments. Um, let's go with the basic one: A/B testing. This is a technique that helps uh, to protect the business. Um, as I'm saying here, not everything should be A/B tested. Um, I remember there was a situation where things were so weird that it seemed that the people wanted to to a b test if it's better to have the accept button with green or red as an example right so not everything should be a b tested and the reality is because it's expensive right it's not um cheap to a b test things but again yeah you you try to do that if you don't want to have a big impact in the in the in in your key metrics especially so the other thing that you should actually do to learn from 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 the decisions you made and, and to try to, to, to learn from these errors is ask questions to metrics, right? Numbers don't lie in the sense that they are raw. If your gross booking is going up or down, you will <laughs> for sure detect if, if that's true or not. Um, and you need to ask a lot of questions. First of all, and the most important, of course, is if you are using the right metric. Um, about metrics, we could talk a lot, a lot in, in maybe a, a different session, but I think that it's a really, really important to, to be sure that you are looking at the right um, um, metric. And then you can ask questions, right? Yeah. If you took a decision and you deliver something, why you did the move, uh, why it went up, why it went down. If it went up, um, which teams could affect this metric? What are they doing? Is there any A-B test running? So as you can see here in this, in this joke that I was sharing before, when something is going up, you need to ask why it's going up. And the same one goes down, right? Why is this metric going down? What what happened? And um, it, it requires a lot of effort, but it's actually key to understand if in, if something was wrong in the business or in the ways that you worked. So this is really, really important. The other one is ask question to users. Um, the follow-up after the delivery is key, is key to learn. And um, you can do that in, 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 in different ways, right? If you're lacking, you can do interviews to users. Of course, please do. Um, doing interviews is not easy. I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit that, uh, about that later. But uh, trying to understand the point of view of the user is, is key. You have also these tools uh, in the market that um, they are known as behavioral analytic tools that allow you to record sessions. And they are really also good to, to understand and see. You can even see the video on a video on how are they using the, the your tool without you being there. So that's that's an amazing um, opportunity also that that you have with these tools. And of course later you have surveys. It's not my favorite one, but but also it can help you to to to, to collect a lot of feedback um, coming from from users. So the other one is um, like these formal meetings. I would say that are retrospectives and postmortems. Um, they are great 
to look back um they have a, a specific like a structure and um and they are really really useful to to learn it is not easy to run um retrospectives and postmortems in a in a healthy way um sometimes some people fall into the blaming um mindset where the postmortems and retrospectives the main main and um, trigger is to learn and um again this is a uh, related to what i was mentioning before if the company doesn't encourage this um this mindset to to learn you could fall into this anti-pattern so yeah i think that it's a uh, retrospective and postmortems are really good to ways to to learn on, on doing things differently on detecting why something didn't um uh, didn't behave as, as expected Another important uh, technique to, to learn from errors is the, the PRDs or uh, product requirement documents. Um, these documents are formal, but I, this, they are really, really beneficial to uh, review certain decisions that you made in the past, right? This document has like a structure where you put what is the problem that you're trying to solve and why they have this, this, this um, rationale behind solving it that way what alternate alternatives you could have considered so it really has pushed you to to think on 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 why you're doing this thing and 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 i've seen some people even um looking at prds that maybe were shared one year ago right so people really look into that and try to understand um why certain decisions were, were made that that way uh, it also it's a really really good way to align between stakeholders so i really encourage to have something like this formal doc that that will help you um learn from past um, decisions another one that is important is review your processes and your ways of working um so as a product manager you work with uh, several actors right you work with ux you work with the engineering team you work with them um, with the stakeholders you work i'm sorry with the, with the users with the business so you, you you work with a lot of people so review always your processes how often do you talk with users and stakeholders when do you check the feasibility with the engineering team in which phase are you just telling them what to do are they engaged with what things that they are doing and do you involve them in the in the ideation should you i don't know is your team mature enough do they know enough things about the user should they know more about the users how are you sharing the what the users are are sharing with them how do you evaluate the success or failure of a feature of product so review your process it's really important review your ways of working and try to detect if there is something that you could improve that will make um will make you available uh, will make you uh, able to do um, better decisions in the future with the team so another thing asking for feedback um asking for feedback after you took a decision is quite hard normally the mentorship and one-to-ones is more about yeah how can you maybe improve in the communication and all that but uh i think it is good if you have someone as a reference that you could ask um, freely and openly. It's like, okay, I did that decision; it was wrong. How, what would you have done? And and having these discussions that are open um, are really, really um, good. Also, something that, in my experience, is not that common is it sometimes it's weird, and we talked about that with some colleagues. Is that ask for advice to other product managers. The product manager role sometimes is a little bit um, lonely. Um, we are all the time work, working and talking with a lot of people, but it's it is uh, weird that it's not that common, I would say, to to talk with uh, other product managers openly and being open and humble about how you work and what you do. And my experience is not that common, and and I really really encourage to do it because I only can say good things about that. Really, really good things. So now let's go about my learnings. I'm going to share some experiences that I had in the past that. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing here is like um when something when you read something in a book um it has certain impact right but the impact sometimes is not that big right you could maybe talk about jobs to be done uh, which is a technique that it's really famous and you can read books about that but later put that in practice sometimes it's not that easy but if you do an error and you try to remember okay what i write in jobs to be done a uh, book then okay you you could you could really really learn and uh, more right so the what i'm saying that about that is because these learnings they might seem some of some of them a little bit obvious you know like well of course i i i already knew that right but when you learn from an error 
it really gets into your mind and you remember them and then you 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 are becoming actually a, a better product manager but you need to pay attention to that right that's why is it, it is important so yeah the first one of the learnings ask why of course but to the right person and the reason is because i remember a situation and, and this was actually one of my first um experiences as a product manager where um, another I, I was working as a product manager and another manager came and said okay we need to do that because uh, leadership is is requesting this right so i said okay i understood what he was saying we were working with the team like one month and a half something like that and when we were we had actually the, the front end the team didn't have front end at that time so they learned how to do it and they they delivered the first um, draft in the first version when i shared it with this um, person the, the one that actually originally requested the the, the idea i'm sorry the the, the need um that person said okay but why don't we do this and why don't we do that and why and i was like whoa at that time it, to me it was super clear right i was like first of all why i didn't talk to that person on the first time and the first um and then we, we we i did i think that we shouldn't have needed to develop a front end and everything to validate the solution so with the powerpoint the same graph that they created and the same product they have created I could have checked with the user directly with a prototype that I with a, with a PowerPoint actually. I could have detected what was actually the problem and the need, right? So the learnings that I had and they were really important to me is talk directly with the requester to understand the problem. Why? What is the problem that we're trying to solve? What is the value that it will provide? Because you're gonna put effort from a developer um, team to, to do that. A small valuable iterations so don't go with the final um, thing and if possible try to do it always a small and valuable iterations and of course what i was saying before coding prototype it seems it seems uh, i know it's super obvious but sometimes you can fall into into these errors and and then the good thing that you need to ask about the request is because you are full of assumptions right so when when this manager came to me with the request I was making a lot of assumptions that I was not talking with the, with the original source. So this is one of the learnings that I had at the very beginning of my career. And, and it really, really, really um, helped me um, in future um, decisions. Oh, another line, over engineering. Um, yeah, engineers, of course, love um, their work. And they really like um, to be up to date with industry. And they really like to know the new techniques and new technologies. And uh, in here, well, this is a joke that we have here, um, but uh, this is real. I mean, it happens. And um, this goes, again, similar to validate your assumption and solutions. Um, you need to talk with the team, and it's totally fine to ask to the engineering team why they, they are proposing this solution and what is the problem that this is trying to solve. Um, so having this conversation with engineering is, is really valuable. The thing is, like, Sometimes engineers think that they know some problems that the user are having and they they do a lot of assumptions. So this is fine in the sense that I, I really like when the engineering team proposes ideas, but the, your job as a product manager is to guide them, right? So first of all, of trying always, of course, to, to tell them, the, to explain the problems that users um, face, uh, explaining how they work so that they could have uh, ideas. But sometimes they have ideas that are like that, right? And, and I, I, on my experience, it, it has happened that you have like a technical solution that is super great, but it doesn't actually fit any of the needs. And you're trying to fight saying, okay, but how can you use that? And um, yeah, for engineering, it's something that you need to also um, pay attention and, and, it, and you need to be um, kind of not close, close, close to the engineering team, but you need to 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 be there and and be able to challenge um, their decisions as well. Another of the learnings is yeah, it is okay to kill product and features. So I remember one time that we were um, ambitious with one project. We wanted to do something that it was complicated, right? And uh, I think that we were like two or three months without the expected results. And um, when you have something that is your yours, that is your product, um, 
you get attached to some degree to the to the product and you want the product to succeed but you need to be realistic and you need to be humble and it is fine if you kill a product because otherwise i mean it is difficult right because sometimes you think that you can make it but you need to be realistic and humble and maybe take hard decisions um also it will help you to, to explain the rationale behind the, the decision right like okay we have been working on that for two months we've invested this amount of money and i think that we should stop it now otherwise we will waste maybe um twice much and and also this is really important and related to features it's it, it is the same sometimes you release something and you leave it there and uh, just maybe expecting the users to use it but the reality is that they are not using it so less is more and you need to be realistic and humble sometimes you could get again attached not just to product but also to features that you think that they are great but maybe they are not that great as you as you thought so that's also learning that i had that it's really really important another learning of course i mentioned about metrics i really like metrics um, it's not the only indicator about what you need to do but it helps to have a lot of discussions. Um, in that case, I remember a situation where in a team we were having a, a, a solution that had a, a good percentage, I would say, of errors, right? So instead of having, of course, the 100% of success, we were having like a 20% of errors on, on the process on the process that we, we were running. And uh, we wanted to decrease this 20% of errors, of course, and we were talking with the team, okay, what, what is happening and all of that. And and I remember one of the engineers saying, okay, I know what is happening. This is what is happening. And I was like, well, how can you know that, right? So then I encouraged them, okay, guys, uh, let's use some metrics here. Let's try to collect what, where, what are the possible problems in here. They invested, I would say, maybe, I don't remember, but actually, I don't know, one, two weeks, one sprint to collect the metrics. Um, and when we looked at the metrics, the problem was another one. So my takeaway is like, it is always easier to talk about metrics and not about, about assumptions. Assumptions is uh, one of the, I would say my, one of the biggest learnings that I have, and I try to find them with all my heart is, is that right? Is, uh, is the assumptions. And uh, to me, it was really interesting because when we collected the metrics and we saw the graphs and we saw that, I don't remember, but I think that 80% of the cases were where this um, process was failing was one error. And on one backend, when, I, when the backend saw that, it's like, whoa, I think that I can fix that in one week. And he fixed it and the, it would increase the, this percentage of, um, of errors. But imagine the, the cost of not using these metrics and maybe solving something that it was not actually the problem, right? So it is, again, a waste of, of development um, time. Another learning, oh, I love that one. The art of interviewing or discovery. Uh, well, this is a uh, really, really important. That's why I said at the very beginning also and when we were talking about the process of, of software development, how important and the key that this is. Um, I've been sometimes you could have a UX ideally. If you have a UX, it's much easier, of course. But if you don't have a UX, um, sometimes you as a product manager, you need to do this discovery and you need to talk with users and you need to interview them and try to um, get the best out of it. So this one uh, actually ha happened to me maybe twice or three times, and it's a little bit frustrating. Um, when you are working with users, you um, try, you understand their problem, you present the prototype, they give you the, the thumbs up, you then deliver the feature functionality and they didn't use it <laughs> and it's a frustrating but like oh wait wait uh, i've been talking to you i've been sharing with you the prototype and you said yeah thumbs up i released it and then you didn't use it so this proves that uh, it's really hard this discovery slash interview phase it's really really hard so as a product manager i i think that is important you don't need to be an expert interviewing it's not that I think that's why we have UX because UX I consider UX as a crucial um, role in a in a team. Um, but yeah, I think that it's important that you learn to interview. You learn what questions should be asked. You learn what are the the resources that should be used when you are doing an interview. When you review 
the way that the users work. So the much the more you can get from 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 these interviews, the better. But it's really important to learn how to do um, the interviews. And so yeah, UX is crucial. Spend more time with the problem than with the solution. Once you have detected the problem, possible metrics that you should uh, tackle, then it's much much easier to work on 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 the solutions. But spend a lot of a lot of time always trying. To, to to detect the right um, problem. Um, another learning, yeah, get out of the river from time to time. So yeah, this is a, an analogy that I that I that I make. That is, um, when you are new to a team or to a company, of course, it's it, it, it's different if it's new in a company or a team. You ask a lot of questions. You question everything, right? Like, okay, why you are working like this? Um, why this decision was made right so you ask a lot of questions and that's great eh? i mean it's great i think that it's really really beneficial maybe you learned techniques in your previous team and you're trying to maybe try it in this team or in a different company they were working differently and okay let's try this here um and this is great but i've noticed uh, on myself and, and and of course also i've seen that in others it's like at, at some point you get used to work uh, in in that way and then you stop kind of questioning things that should be questioned again. So my learning is try to take a step back from your day-to-day -day work, right? You work eight hours and you're continuously doing, doing things, continuously doing things. And um, you should stop from time to time and question yourself, right? So I'm saying like every quarter, try to rejoin your team yeah that's that's more or less what i'm what i'm trying to say like it's okay are we using this red metrics why are we doing like this so uh, again is what i said before also it's healthy to move between things because it's a way for you to rejoin a team and and and, and also learn um from this process and, and, and another aspect kind of related is that never criticize the decisions made before you go to a team or company because you need to know why the decisions were were made on on, on like this right and it's really, really, really bad to do that, and um, and actually, uh, a lot of the things that I that I'm saying about this learning is actually from a book that I totally recommend. That it's from Melissa Perry called "Escape the Build Trap." It, she talks a bit about that and uh, how when you're in a company or in a team, you tend to at the end um, go with the flow and and you end up doing things that maybe if you are a rejoiner or a, a new team member in the team, you wouldn't you wouldn't do. So, so yeah. What what are the conclusions about um about the the talk is write your learnings down. This is really important. First of all, for you as a product manager to become a product manager, try to do that quarterly if you can or something like that. Try to review them yearly. Look back at this at the errors that you made in the in the past. It's it's great that to look at them. Sometimes when you look at them after I don't know two years. Some of them like it looks super basic, especially if you are starting. But it's fine. It's fine because this is your your learning um, curve, and it's perfect. And maybe even you are writing a book. Who knows, right? So if you write down your learnings, maybe that's going to be uh, also beneficial for um, other people and also for the company. If you are learning things about the business, about the users, any learning that the company. Um, can can get from you. This is this is really um, great. Um, sometimes I've seen I've seen in companies like okay, but we tried this in the past. What are the learnings? And and it is hard, I know, to keep track of things, um, especially in a, in companies and especially if they are big. But it's important to 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 keep track of, of that. The other one is, of course, fail fast, fail fast. It's it's fine. Um, the the reason is easy. If you take only uh, you, if you take only I don't know ten decisions um, per month, uh, or you take one hundred, of course it's better if you fail much more. Uh, also, please remember not releasing something that is wrong, but try to fail at the very beginning of of the phase. This is really 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 important. And the last that is really difficult is promote the culture the culture to talk about. Errors I'm putting here, but not errors, of course, is learnings. Promote the culture to talk about learnings because, as I said, everybody does mistakes. We do all errors. And the important thing is to learn from these errors 
and to become like a, a better product manager and to have a, a better company that it's um, beneficial and, and it's working um, that is working well this is really good for you and also for the company so that's it i hope that you find it useful please reach out in linkedin if you have any question or you want to know a little bit more about anything nick or anything glad to help i hope that it was uh, good and have a good day bye bye